Okay, so this last week I have been quietly doing a portrait study grind. I've been watching videos, learning about the planes of the face, doing black and white portraits of random dudes with really defined cheekbones. And seeing as I have the commitment level of a goldfish, I got bored after doing a grand total of two studies. I was like, man, I want to do something with color. I want to draw a face I recognized. And then I had a light bulb moment. Okay, maybe that was more of a record scratch than a light bulb. This is a drawing of Tom Hiddleston as the ever popular Marvel character, Loki, that I drew in 2015. I remember spending about three days on this and being way too proud of the result. <laughs> and I realized, hey, this reference photo is in color, Tom Hiddleston is a face I recognize, and he even has really defined cheekbones. So why not try to redraw Loki and see how much I've improved at this art thing after five years? Bing! Hello, I'm Zakura, and welcome back to my channel. And okay, maybe the backstory of this video wasn't quite as entertaining. <laughs> I do have the commitment level of a goldfish, but what you didn't know was that goldfish can actually be trained to play basketball. So that means something very relevant, I'm sure. <laughs> but so the full, less interesting story is that I have indeed been practicing portrait painting recently. Getting a better understanding of the planes of the face was a new year's resolution of mine. So I'm finally getting to it. Especially since I have really been doing a lot of watercolor and traditional work lately, as you guys know, which was another New Year's resolution. So I'm taking a short break from that, I guess, and uh, switching back to digital to tackle a, a different New Year's resolution. The reason that I'm drawing Loki is actually because the other day I turned on the TV and lo and behold, the movie Thor 2 was on and it brought me back to 2015 when I saw the first two Thor movies for the first time and the memory of trying to draw Loki when I had pretty much zero experience drawing portraits or people or anything really realistic. At that point in my drawing journey, I was pretty much exclusively doing anime characters. But I just I just went off on a whim and decided to try to draw a portrait of Loki and it was so hard and I remember being really proud of myself for that drawing. So I went through my old art files and found that drawing and oh my lord does it look different to me now than how I remembered it. So I was like okay 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 okay. Mm -hmm. I've got to try to do a redraw. Also, the cheekbone thing does help. <laughs> it's not just a joke. I'm finally trying to study the structure of the human face in a more complete and proper fashion so that I can build a good foundation and understanding of the human head and facial features. This way I'll eventually be able to draw any type of face. That's my hope. And the best place to start that learning journey is by drawing dudes. In particular, dudes with very sharp defined features. It's just a lot easier to find and draw draw the structure guidelines when the subject has a much boxier, squarer face. Whereas people with rounder faces, often women, are more difficult to draw because they tend to have much smoother, rounder features. So seeing as I've only done two face studies so far, I'm still in the very square dude head phase of drawing portraits. So picking Loki as a subject to draw was more than just a whim of the moment to draw this again challenge idea. It was indeed more methodical than that. Also, the choice of reference photo was something that I chose very carefully as well. Picking a good reference when drawing is always important, but it is especially important when you're still learning, like me. <laughs> because there are a whole lot of photos of beautiful people on the internet that would be very difficult to draw, simply because of the lighting. A lot of the time, photos that people take of themselves or other people don't have a lot of shadows outlining a person's features or just have like really bogus washed out colors. And that makes the painting process a lot harder because the difference in light values may be so subtle across the entire face 
that you can't even really pick up on it with your eyes, much less paint it. Thankfully, photo shoots for movie characters usually make fantastic reference photos, uh, as I've found, because they're shot by professional photographers, and they usually have really great lighting and shadows and color. I couldn't find nor remember the reference photo that I used for the 2015 version I did. I definitely did use reference for that piece back then as well, but I completely just did not remember which one I'd used. But I did decide to stick with a front view reference to keep with the similarity, and I thought this one was really interesting, very dramatic. Didn't really think about how much of a pain all that armor was going to be to paint as well, but I'll get more into that later. So going into this painting, I did want to go for a slightly more stylized version of Loki rather than a completely um, realistic copy of the reference photo, largely in part because I doubted my ability to pull something like that off, um, but also because as amazing as realism and hyperrealism is, I also kind of find it boring. I mean, do not get me wrong, it is absolutely incredible to see artists that are able to draw hyper-realistic faces that look like dead on 100% like a photo. I admire that dedication and that skill level so much, but artistically, that's just never been something that I am personally particularly drawn to because I'm like, Okay, if it looks exactly like the reference photo, then why should I even bother drawing it? Sounds like a lot of work when you really could have just taken a photo in the first place. So I didn't obsess too much over the original structure lines being exactly the same as the reference photo. I just wanted it to be enough so that it looks for sure like Tom Hiddleston as Loki, but still like stylized. That being said, as I got into the painting part, I did kind of start obsessing over making it look pretty realistic. Was not planning on that at first, thought I was going to keep things much simpler, but as I was painting, I started getting more confident and just got carried away a little with the rendering. As much as I am glad that I put that extra work into it, I also started to slightly regret my reference photo choice because now I was stuck with this fairly rendered face and you you know you can't just have a fully rendered head with bogus slapped in hair and clothes i mean come on whenever i see drawings like that i'm like did you give up on the painting halfway <laughs> so that meant i had to put a bunch of effort into the clothes and hair as well and i have never drawn shiny armor in a realistic style it was very intimidating, I had no idea how to even approach it, but it ended up coming out pretty great, so that was actually really satisfying. A bit of a, of a plus. <laughs> and it really gave me a new appreciation for costume designers. There was so much texture and detail, uh, even in this cropped off shoulders up photo. From the snake in the metal shoulder pad, to the subtle bumpy pattern on the stiff black armor, and the sort of velvety texture of the collar that's different from the rest of the shirt. It's honestly really beautiful to see the amount of work and detail that goes into a movie costume. Shout out to costume designers! <laughs> One major thing that I did change from the reference photo was his expression. In the photo he is very serious, pretty much burning a hole into your soul, and I decided to make the expression in my illustration a bit more smirky, just a little, a little glint of Tom foolery. See what I did there? Because it's Tom Hiddleston. No? Okay. He is Loki, after all, the god of mischief, and I think it's very much within his character to be a little, a little sinisterly smirky.
So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I originally watched Thor 1 and 2 in 2015, which was late, <laughs> considering Thor 1 came out in like, what, 2013 or something like that? I also watched the first Avengers movie after watching Thor 2, which is the wrong order to watch those movies. <laughs> it was a little confusing to watch Thor 2, which starts with Loki in chains, and, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what happened? I also haven't watched any other Avengers movies since then. I have not watched Thor 3. I am very behind on Marvel movies, but that's not a surprise to you guys, right? <laughs> By now, you guys all know I live under a rock and have no life beyond making art and writing stories and editing videos. That is, that is what I am. <laughs> but I really did enjoy the Thor movies that I did see, Thor 1 and Thor 2, and Loki was definitely my favorite character. Mostly for the sarcasm, but also because I think he's just a really well-developed character. Obviously, Loki, just like all of the other characters from Asgard, has his roots in Norse mythology, he's the god of mischief and chaos, or at least those are the main attributes that the original Marvel creators played off of for their version of Loki, and I think that concept alone is a very complex character type to pull off. And I'm saying that from like a writer's perspective, it's a lot simpler to write characters that are closer to the polar ends of like good hero and like evil villain dude. Because we all have a sort of built-in understanding of what's a good thing to do and what's a bad thing to do. But mischief, that word, is kind of neither. It's really more just unpredictable and impulsive. And unpredictability is an uncomfortable thing to be around. You know, it makes us stressed out and instills a certain level of distrust when we can't control something or know what's going to happen next. Hey 2020, how you doing? Which is why Mischief does obviously have a negative annotation, which keys in perfectly to Loki in the movies being in a kind of villain role. But because unpredictability is uncomfortable, it's also captivating because it makes you want to dig deeper to try to find patterns and any sort of order within the chaos. Because if you can find predictability within chaos, it's not really chaos anymore and thus not uncomfortable anymore. Which I guess is just a really complicated way of saying that basically, us human beings have an innate curiosity and need to figure things out. Whether it's good or bad doesn't really matter as long as we know. And the character of Loki, particularly in the Thor movies, really envelops that unpredictability. You never really know where he truly stands on the scale of good guy or bad guy. One minute he's trying to destroy everything, the next he's risking his life to save his brother. And I feel like that complexity is what makes his character so endearing because you're constantly curious and constantly trying to figure out where this person stands. And the moment you think you've got him pinned, there's another twist that throws you off guard and keeps you guessing. Another character with a similar character type that comes to mind is actually Howl from Howl's Moving Castle, uh, the book by Diana Wayne Jones, not so much the movie, where for the entire book you're pretty much like just trying to figure out whether Howl is this all-powerful wizard dude or just like a man baby. <laughs> is he good? Is he bad? You don't really know. You want him to be good, but maybe he's bad. Gotta read the whole book in order to figure it out. And that's like the similar feeling that Loki gives to the audience. And then the backstory that they gave Loki to explain his chaotic behavior, and the way they were able to lighten everything and make it relatable for a mainstream audience. It just all fits, and I admire that character writing and, of course, the acting to bring that character to life. And that whole thing was pretty much just me full-on geeking out about character development, wasn't it? <laughs> this, this is the stuff I live for, I'm sorry. Long story short, Loki is a great character, one of the most interesting and complex in the Avengers universe. But again, I am not familiar with a whole lot of Marvel characters, I have not read the comic books, and I have not seen more of Loki since the second Thor movie. He's in like another three movies that I have not watched, so it's, re so it's really just from what I've been exposed to. No spoilers, please, because I will eventually watch those movies. Mark my words. So back to talking about the illustration. I'm hoping that after I've learned a bit more about portrait painting, 
after I've learned more techniques and done more studies, I will do a study with Zaki video, uh, or maybe multiple videos even, on portrait painting, so that I may share my knowledge and what I've learned. But for now, I'm still learning myself, still stumbling and figuring out my own way to get better. <laughs> I feel like with every single study that I do, I get a little bit better, and it's kind of addicting, actually. And even now that it's been a few days since I painted this Loki piece, I can already see things in it that I need to improve on, particularly with colors and edges, but overall, I'm letting myself be proud of this piece because I do think I did a pretty good job, and I, I put my full effort into it. That's something to be proud of. Yay! And speaking of improvement, here's the side-by-side -side comparison of the piece from 2015 with this new 2020 version. Five years of improvement. I spent about five and a half hours on this piece over the course of three days, and if I remember, I spent a similar amount of time on the 2015 version. It's such a feeling of proud embarrassment whenever you look back at your own old work and see all the struggle, all the mistakes that you could have avoided and yet, hell, it brought you to where you are now and in the end, that ain't too shabby. <laughs> I can only hope that in another five years, I'll be able to look back at today's painting and feel just as proudly embarrassed. And that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my endless bumbling. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, found it insightful, helpful, or just entertaining. And if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also hit that little bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. If you have a moment, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of today's video. What are your thoughts on this painting? What are your thoughts on Loki and character development? <laughs> Always interested to hear from you guys. I'll see you all soon. Never stop practicing, never stop improving. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired. Always. See ya!